Alright everybody, how you doing? I'm fucking no too hot. My shoulder is absolutely killing me. See right here, like really, really painful. My foul hinks have torn uh, some ligaments at my, my class. Um, obviously, it's possible. Um, I've never had an injury like that before, but at that BJJ, um, I think there's a high kind of in, um, injury rate, so... Pff, um, I'm no due back to the third, so I really hope that um, it's gone by then, but it's been fucking stressing me out all day, man, like, I've had to, the only thing it's taken it away, like, the pain is see if I lie like this, like, even sit like that, that is the only thing that's taking that pain and discomfort away, man, it is really, really, it's really uncomfortable, um, but um, I wasn't even I wasn't even going to do a video, man. Do you know what I mean? It's just it's really it's really kind of doing my nothing. But um, I wanted to come on and talk about uh, this documentary that I watched. Right, um, it was called Troy Kell Gladiator Days. Now Troy Kell, spelled K E L L, was actually um, he was convicted of murder in Nevada. America in the 80s, right? Uh, it was called the Show and Tell Murder. I think he was only a young guy at the time, 20, 21, 19, something like that. And it was this lassie that he knew who was being uh, pestered by this guy. Um. And what happened was, he was asking her for like, nude photos and what kind of ways that I approach a woman, you know what I mean? You just ask for her fucking number, you know what I mean? Asking for nude photos and all this weird fucking shit, you know what I mean? Um, so, she's been just making it plain, like, listen, no interested, but he's not took the hint. And so her and her ma have went to the cops and the cop there's no stalking laws in Nevada at the time, so there was nothing that they were got to do about it. And stalking was because was kinda of one of the ambiguous laws where it was like kinda of this grey area, is it doing it legal or illegal or whatever. And um she's ended up got a Troy Kell and he's ended up murdering this guy, right? And leaving him his body in the desert. But he was with this other guy and the bird and they've ended up like going back and telling we Johnny and we Sally and the what more I'll show you the body and they've been doing and they're all in it. Somehow, obviously if you've killed somebody and you dare that, it's not gonna be long before one of them <laughs> obviously gets in touch with the law, you know what I mean? So obviously um they've got nicked for it. I think the last he got twenty year or something. Uh don't know if the other guy got in or what he got, and Troy Kell gets sentenced to life, right, um, in the Nevada uh, state system, so there's a state system out there, and the federal system, um, I don't know if he got life without parole, or if he got like, life with like fucking 30 years or whatever, but um, when he's went into prison, he was kind of this fresh faced young guy, and or the other they've got booty bandits and all that and one of them's trying to kinda accost him and made it known. Sooner or later, I'm taking you. He's like, ah, oh, is that right, aye? He's ended up getting a big tool, big spike man, and just setting about him with as you as you would do, you know. Um, especially <laughs> somebody's making comments like that, that's what they say, forewarned is forearmed, giving you a gypsy's warning, you know what I mean, I'm, <laughs> maybe he might have got somewhere if he hadn't said that to him, because the guy was like, maybe mid-40s, and he's only like a young guy, 19, 20, so I dare say, if he hadn't warned him, he might have fucking succeeded in his horrible intentions, you know what I mean, and that's the mad thing about the jails out there, man. Like, that shit goes on all the time, and, like, nobody gives a fuck, um, and it's actually, it's just, it would be so horrendous to be 
to be serving time in a in a system where um rape culture is normalised, that would be fucking horrendous because um the whole time I've ever been in um the whole time I've ever been in oh this is day man man. The whole time I've ever been in uh, jails in Scotland, um I've kinda think of ever like that doesn't really that doesn't happen. Obviously I've heard the gay relationships with with guys here and there but nobody really I think there was one in Adewell and one in Low Moss that I can think of off the top of my head. But it was like it wasn't like pure spoke about in the opening, like nobody spoke about it if you get me. It was all like just kinda whispered. Nobody gave a fuck. Know what I mean? It was consensual for what I understood. Um and the funny thing is like do you ever wonder why that is? I dare say if you were in a jail at shorts, right, and you were a big fucking you were a big boy could easily overpower a weaker inmate and you done that <laughs> I dare say it wouldn't be long before your skull was caved in like an easter egg um, I'm being honest with you because you would get people all kind of getting clicked up like what's to stop him for doing that to one of us next and that's a thing in jail a lot of the times you don't see a one on one attack it's usually a couple just to get the message out a lot quicker and more brutal like three times the damage you know what I mean it's like just fucking murder um, but he's ended up um, being shipped out to Utah the state of Utah right um, as part of something called prisoner exchange program or something and um, so he's in there and I think Obviously, all their jails are segregated along racial lines. So you've got like, the whites, and then all their subcategories. You've got the Mexicans, you've got the Norteños, the Sureños, so it's Northerners and Southerners. And then all their wee different kind of offshoots. And then who else you got? You've got the blacks, obviously, and then you've got Asians, and I think there's one called, like, Others. Which is like fucking Samoans and Fijians, whatever. See that kind of stuff. I mean, Native uh, Native Americans. I think they're all lumped on. They they end up lumped in with Asians. So you've got this melting pot of fucking races, which is kind of like an inverse microcosm of the American society. Because what's what's American? Americans just follow all these different races, and a lot of the times. What we've seen recently is all these kind of, this kind of racial unrest a lot of the times. And the thing is, like, in America, the prison system is, like, sim very similar. It's like, um, is what I'm saying, it's like a reverse, smaller version of the American society. But it's just all people who living in what I said the other day this was a, this is a human zoo this isn't like Pullman and all this shit <laughs> take my telly off me this is this is madness man killing screws screws can kill cons let nothing gets done about it everything swept under the rug you know what I mean and um, I think there was this other inmate who had threatened Troy Kill right this black guy um, must have been dangerous right uh, and what happened was Troy Kells ended up getting this guy. So they're sitting think like, how are we going to get to him? Because obviously I think they must have kept them all separated, right? So what they done was that Troy Kell filled out a medical slip for his cell and the guy he was trying to kill. And so that the two of them would get unlocked to go to medical at the same time, whatever, their doors would be unlocked. And they've got them out in the... So they call you know how what this we call it a section or out in the hall they call it like a pod they call it the pod and they've got them out there man they'll just they've attacked him him and this other guy right and 
the other guy's holding his fucking legs, like just bear hugging this guy's legs, and Troy Kells sitting down on top of him and just boof, 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 just just teabagging the shit out of him. And this was all caught on prison CCTV, right? And the screws are watching it for the control bubble, and pff, the the guy, the inmates are all fucking screaming and yelping and making noises and all this kind of shit. I think they'd stabbed him 71 times. The guy's like, please stop, you're killing me. And <laughs> he just kept doing them, man. And obviously the guy must have realised, man, he was in trouble because obviously it was his last words, you know, and that must be fucked up. See, so haven't he, like, imagine seeing that on the internet and that was your brother, your dad, whatever. Um, <laughs> aye, wouldn't it be fucking nice, but... That's the thing in these places, like, I'm talking in the American t context, really, obviously, do you know what I mean? That's not really kind of, it happens here, but it's not like over there, man, do you know what I mean? It's like happening every day over there, it's like fucking half the charts. Um, and, obviously, the screws have waited for however long, and then rushed in with the when it's, they felt it was safe to do it. And uh, they've charged Troy Kell and this other guy, I think his name was Eric Daniels. You know what he was in um, there for? Fucking forging checks or something. How do you, this is what's fucked up and all, how do you put somebody that's in for a non-violent offence and we guys that are in for murders, multiple murders even? Especially in an environment where you're either a predator or a victim, there's no in between, there's no grey area. You're either a killer or you're gonna be killed, you're gonna be hurt. Yeah, that just blows my mind, man. And sometimes I think that like why why do that? Do you know what I mean? It was it was as if like someday in the 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 system was trying to teach that guy a lesson because I think I think he'd like stole forged um a county cop or a county sheriff's checkbook or some shit when i was watching the documentaries i says it was called um troy kell gladiator days you can find it on youtube if you type that in anatomy of a prison murder um absolutely fucking horrendous man just seeing a guy being pinned down and just just butchered um but they were sentenced to death for that um, so this happened in like nineteen ninety four, right? And um, it's been ongoing since then. But <clears throat> the funny thing was when I seen Troy Kell being interviewed on it, right? He comes across as very intelligent, like the superficial charm and all that. Um, but eyes, eyes are dead. Um, it actually reminded me of somebody that I know very well who's serving a life sentence for murder, I knew that I'd been all through the system with this guy. Um, no gonna say his name, but um going very well with him. Um but very, very dangerous. Um probably one of the most dangerous guys I've met in the system. Um and MD that knew him would probably tell you the same thing. Um done my mental shit in there. Um but he, when I looked at, when I seen Troy Kell being interviewed, he just, even his face kind of reminded me of this guy, the eyes, everything like that, demeanour, the lights went off, but don't underestimate them, man. Um, very dangerous specimens, you know what I mean? But, um, so Troy Kell's been on death row since like the 90s and the funny thing was they didn't even move him out the jail and take him to court they had the court in the jail that's how high security this was because obviously in america they have level one to level six type security right and there's only one level six prison in the whole of america it's called adx florence in colorado and it's known by the the nickname alcatraz of the rockies now Give you an idea of the kind of prisoners they've got. <laughs> El Chapo, right? He's there. So you can imagine what kind of people are in this jail. Sammy the Bill Gravano was in it. Uh, Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, he just died recently. He was there. He was a PhD mathematician at the age of fucking... 
I think he would have done a bachelor's degree at the age of 16. The age of 16. <laughs> um, wow, that's just... That, that's intelligence half the fucking scale. That's le less than 1% of the planet. Um, who else? Uh, Oklahoma City bombers, uh, the shoe bombers, uh, the World Trade Center, people who'd bombed the World Trade Center the first time in 1993. So you've got all these kind of really super high-profile cons in that. But normally somebody like Troy Kell, who had been done with... Like, I don't want to say a run of the mill murder because murder's no run of the mill at all. What I mean is, like, a vanilla murder, there was nothing that stood out about it. You probably go to, like, either level three or level four. Um, do you know what I mean? Um, but they're putting you in this kind of this environment where there's gang raping, there's fucking screws beating guys' skulls in for talking out a turn, <laughs> there's, they're letting, the lunatics run the asylum until the screws decide they want to step in, you know what I mean? So it's not really a good environment um, for trying to get yourself sorted out, rehabilitated, whatever, I would say, it's what I'm saying, rehabilitation's a fairy tale in a lot of cases. Um, I think it has to come from inside you, and I hate using that word anyway, as I've said, but it is what it is, sometimes it's just a, it's just laziness on my part, do you know what I mean? But um, I want to read a wee couple of things um, about, about the, the case, right? Just taking a, you should go on and watch the, you should go on and watch the, the documentary about them. You're, if you see if you've done time, right? If you've ever done time in Scotland, right, and you watch this, you will be like, mate, that is another level, man. Our jails don't compare to this. Obviously, we have our problems with violence and drugs, maybe staff corruption, whatever, but this is another level, man. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, hold on. Oh, jeez, jeez, jeez. Shit. So, we bit a background, right? Troy Michael Kell was born on June the 13th, 1968, and is an inmate on death row in Utah. Kell was sentenced to life in prison by the state of Nevada for the 1986 murder of James Cotton Kelly. He was transferred to the Utah State Prison as part of a prisoner exchange program shortly after his conviction. And on July 6, 1994, Kell attacked and killed inmate Lonnie Blackman at the Utah Department of Corrections Gunnison facility. Kell stabbed Blackman a total of 67 times while his associate, Eric Daniels, held Blackman down. Kell was sentenced to death by firing squad for the murder. Firing squad, not the wounds. Fuck. I think that's probably the only state that's got that. Oh. Uh, Kell was originally imprisoned in the state of Nevada for the murder of 21-year-old James Cotton Kelly. Although tried for killing Kelly, the victim's real name was James Thied, a Canadian citizen who was under investigation for drug smuggling by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. So the first guy you killed was under investigation for uh, fucking drug trafficking, you know what I mean? So a lot of people could have involved in criminality. Some years later, Thede's mother, father and uncle were federally indicted, both in Las Vegas and Toronto for drug smuggling, all using the same alias, Kelly. In 1986, Kel, then aged 18, was asked by his 15-year-old longtime friend Sandy Shaw to beat Cotton Kelly for stalking her. Her mother had gone to the police, but there was no stalking laws in the books at that time. Cotton Kelly drove with Shaw, Kell and a third young man, William Billy Merritt, into the desert where Kell shot Kelly six times in the face, killing him. The murder was dubbed the Show and Tell murder by Las Vegas media because Shaw and another teen, David Fletcher, allegedly returned to the scene of the crime with their friends to see the cops. One of the friends eventually reported the incident to the police, which led to the arrest and convictions of Shaw, Kell and Merritt. Aye, so he had two co-accused then, a bird and uh, another guy. 
In the affidavit that helped free Shaw after many years of incarceration, Fletcher said that Shaw never went back to the scene or took friends to see the body. Fletcher also admitted that District Attorney Dan Seaton got Fletcher to change his testimony and commit perjury at Shaw's trial because Seaton threatened him with prosecution for grand theft for taking the victim's expensive watch and ring. Fletcher further stated that he believed that his testimony was what convicted Shaw and expressed deep regret but also relief for coming forward after all those years. The Las Vegas Sun reported Shaw's words. I made a horrible immature decision to ask a friend to rough this man up so he would leave me alone, Sandy says. Cotton Kelly had been hassling me and pestering me to go out with him and to pose for nude pictures. He would call our house at all hours of the day and was so persistent that my mum phoned the police to request that they keep him away from me. But they didn't have stalking laws in place then like we have today. For her part in the crime, Shaw was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. In 2004, the State Board of Pardons and Parole commuted her sentence, making her eligible for parole. She served 21 years of her sentence and was released on parole in December 2007. William Merritt, who testified against Kell, was released from prison after serving only four years of an 8-12 to 12 year sentence, which was a plea bargain sentence. He later returned for subsequent crimes and is now serving life in prison without parole. Fucking hell, man. Troy Kell was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Um, hold on. So HBO in cooperation with Blowback Productions filmed a documentary entitled Gladiator Days, Anatomy of a Prison Murder, which was released in 2002. It tells the story of Troy Kell and Eric Daniels' murder of Lonnie Blackman and shows footage of the initial trial in 1986. Statements from Kell, Daniels, guards, the state attorney, Blackman's brother and Sandra Shaw, who was serving time elsewhere as the instigator of Kell's first murder, for which Kell was originally incarcerated, and footage of the attack captured by CCTV within Utah prison in Gunness in Utah. Aye, that's a documentary I was just mentioning. Due to security concerns, the state won the right to hold Kell's trial for the death of Blackman in a courtroom within the Utah State Prison facility. So, like I said, rather than um, ship him out for court, they've just fucking held <laughs> the trial in the jail. That's, see what I mean? In America, man, there's anything goes, man. They do anything they want over there. Convicted of aggravated murder, the state pushed for and secured a death sentence from the jury. Prosecutors said the murder of Blackman, an African-American, by Kell, a white supremacist, was racially motivated. In 2003, Kell came within a month of execution by firing squad after initially dropping his appeals, but eventually chose to file an appeal. As of ja January 2016, Kell remains in death row as his appeals process continues. Now, as I watched that documentary, there was something that he said to the the interviewer that that can I, I'd like to can I, um raise um and what it was was uh Troy Kell was basically saying I think what should happen is you should take me down to the the civic centre um and show show the people you are committing a murder as well. He says, when you want to look at it, he says, you are just justifying it the way the same way I'm justifying it. You are calling it um something else, um. But I like how do I put it? You are calling me a murderer, but you are not murderers. He's like you are still taking a life. It still says homicide on my death certificate. He says, you should call it what it is instead of trying to dress it up with this fucking medical procedure language because I think they were obviously saying about maybe the lethal injection um, he's like I think you should just take me down to the like, like, a, like a fucking stadium fill the stadium up and just fucking shoot me in front of everybody and I was kind of like <laughs> um, kind of I see where he's coming from that because 
it's like semantics, it's like wordplay on it, it's like, that's just government for you, but it's like, um, they're, they're just good at, like, making you think, like, try to, like, no mess with your head, but change the, the meaning of things, where, oh no, that's no murder, that's, um, <laughs> That's called um, a medical procedure for uh, somebody who's actually been a killer. <laughs> no, well, taking a life's obviously taking a life. And sometimes I think it can be justified. We, we, there's certain people who just, they're just too dangerous to be. Some crimes are so heinous that you're just like, no, man, like your, your serial killers and all that kind of shit, you know what I mean? Like, no sympathy that way. Uh, but it's not really done to me to say, I this should happen to them because at the end of the day I'm only a victim of that, do you know what I mean? And it's never affected me touch wood. So um I feel that it's done to the people who it's affected to say what they want to happen to the offender. Cause I'm sure in Iran there was a serial killer caught, right? I can't mind his name. It was but his nickname was like the Desert Vampire, right? In I'm sure he was like tied to a pole and the victim's family were given like razors or something. I would need to check it again. I read it in prison, but it was like fucking hell, man. Iran, know what I mean? Getting caught all there. <laughs> Aye, do you know what I mean? The 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 boys' mods not were given like fucking. See like. You know how like the cat of nine tails or something like that. They were just all stolen, flogging, fuck at him and. Stabbing his eyes out and fuck those mad shit. It was just, just like biblical kind of stuff, like for medieval times. Do you know what I mean? Um, obviously different culture, different rules, different laws. You know what I mean? But um, firing squad, you're getting half easy if you're fucking compared to all the hell. You know what I mean? So it's different degrees of punishment, different contexts, and it's just it is it is all very interesting. But I'm just glad I'm in a a child reading about it now as opposed to being there. Obviously, as I've said before in my own personal opinion, the Scottish context doesn't compare to America, it doesn't compare to Iran. We're just don't want to say like don't want to say what a college compared to that. But Obviously, because we have our problems as well, and I've seen a lot of like, bad things happen in jail and all that, and it's just, it's not nice, it's not a nice place to be, but when you're in their, 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 their jails that he's in, like, somebody saying, I'm raping you, I'm killing you, and as soon as that door's open and you know he means it, what else are you going to fucking do? What are you really going to do? Ask yourself that. Know what I mean? It's now you're sitting here and... Like, try to come across, like, I oh, would you fucking do this and do that? Ask yourself, really, what you would do? Do you even know? One thing I do know, I would want a fucking tool. So as I had a fighting chance, you know what I mean? I know that much. And what happened after that was in God's fucking hands, you know what I mean? Mm. Just Disney Bell thinking about, you know what I mean? And... That's fucking horrendous, man. But um, before I go, obviously it's uh, New Year's Eve tomorrow, so um, I don't even know if I'll come on and do a video. Um, but I'm no, I'm no doing anything for that. I'm no partying. I'm no getting drunk. Um, I've not even been bothered to be honest with you. Uh, cause. I'm going to Edinburgh on the 4th for something important that I'll talk about after it happens. Um, and the funny thing is, like, I'm getting kind of jaded with, like, having beers and all that now anyway. It's just, can't be fucked with it, to be honest with you. Because um, I want to, uh, I want to, re I've, got, I've got things I want to achieve this year. And that's no, that's no helping my goals at all. And it's, I'm a social drinker anyway, it's not like, see like, when I used to drink back in the day, you'd be drinking like fucking Friday to Monday and all that, and you'd be waking up mad gas, don't know how you go there, just pff, carnage, man. Um, Maybe drink, let it say, pints, right? Maybe ten sometimes. But that's that's still over the, the, the intake. And I'm going to train and say four days a week, and then... 
eh, doing that on a Friday, and that's just like putting weight in my gut, and it's not really good for you as well. Anyway, you're getting older now, and can't be fucked with it. And um, as I say, it's just I've got different goals now, but um, obviously, um. Every other new year I've been out, man, I've fucking been drinking for like the hug money right up to like the second of January or something. So, um, obviously getting used to being out and all that as well and all that. And new year is a time to celebrate a lot of the time. But, um, I just want different things for myself now. And, um, obviously doing this podcast has really, really done that for me, helped me see that. Um, and I want to achieve it, and so I'm just, just I'm just not doing it. So, um, but whatever yours are doing, I really hope that yeah, you enjoy it, have a good time, um, be safe, um, especially like last season that like if you're you're gonna make sure you're traveling in pairs, um in well lit areas and just be mindful whose company you're in and all that kind of shit you know what I mean because one thing I do notice every new year there's always violent incidents happening um, people that wander about maybe under the influence um, all that kind of stuff just no try to like frighten anybody just be, just be mindful of your own personal security you know what I mean um just fucking enjoy yourself but just be careful, you know what I mean? Um so next time I'm back on will probably be like the first of January, probably. Um unless I do get bored tomorrow and come on in day one, I don't know, but I'm not really I'm not really planning on it to be honest. So I really hope that you enjoy yourselves, whatever you are doing. Um and don't get up to anything dodgy. <laughs> so um, I'll leave you. I'll leave you here, and um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, as I say, is if you want to look up that uh, that documentary on YouTube, you should maybe go and check it out if you're into that kind of stuff. Um, Troy Kell K E L L. Uh, what was your name? It Gladiator Days or something. Um, brutal documentary but very very watchable so um, all the best for uh, 2024 when it comes and I'm just looking forward to getting started in 2024 because um, got a lot of shit I want to be doing and um, got the right mindset for starting next year so um, all the best everybody and I'll speak to you soon have a good time right